All right, uh, before we actually start our project, there are some additional uh, brackets, custom configurations that I think that you might be interested in. And if you want to make sure that uh, the stuff that you're doing looks similar to what I'm doing, then uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you some different options. So, or even if you want them to look, you know, different, uh, I still want to show you the different options. So one of the things that I personally don't love is I don't love having a white background uh, for code view because I'm on my computer a lot during the day, especially whenever I'm sitting for hours and hours coding um, and looking at the screen, there's a lot of light emitting from the screen. So I tend to make my environment a little bit dark and have brighter text. So one of the things that you can do is you can go up here to view, you can go to themes, and right off the bat, brackets has two default themes. There's light, which is the default, and there's dark. And you'll notice that the font size is 14 pixels by default, and then it has the source code pro medium by default also. So I'm going to go ahead, first of all, I'm going to choose brackets dark, and you'll sort of see a dimmed out version in the background, but after I hit the done button, you're going to see it that it's actually brighter. And for the sake of my demonstrations, I'm going to make my font size 16. Uh, for demos, you might want to keep yours the same, but you can play around with this. The other thing, too, that you can do with your source code uh, uh, pro medium, that is the first available option. You see that it's in uh, single quote marks, and then after the quotes, it's separated by a comma. And then you've got some other options that come following after that. And basically what this is, is it's a descendant, uh, I shouldn't say descendant, it's a, uh, an alternate set of uh, font families that if for some reason it can't load source code pro, it'll go to this next option. And then if it can't load that, it'll go to MS Gothic. And, and finally, it'll just choose whatever the default monospace is uh, for the particular uh, computer that you're on. Now, one of the things you you never want to you never want to get rid of this last fallback. Uh, mono space is going to be the default, and it just picks whatever uh, the default is set on that machine for that particular font style. So, um, mono space though, I would always recommend that mono space is something that you should do, and or something that is very similar to mono space, but generally true mono space is good. Basically, what mono space will do is that it allows every single character to have occupy the basically the same amount of space. So the letter M is going to take up the same amount of space as the letter I. And the reason that's really useful is because additional spaces or the lack of spaces in code can actually mean the difference between something working and not working. It can be a syntax error uh, if you have too many spaces or if you don't have enough spaces. And the reason that it's useful to use monospace is that it makes it really clear when you're looking at stuff, it makes it extremely clear what, you know, like what is an actual space and what is just a little bit of room between letters, right? So I'm going to go ahead and uh, suggest that we try to see what this looks like. All right, we say done. And you can see that this is kind of uh, not too bad, right? It's a little bit bigger. Right, and it's brighter, and I find that this is easier to read. You might not. Uh, it's really kind of your decision how you want to do this. Um, and there are, for Windows, there are some different ways that you can see what the monospace options are on your computer. You can go and do a web search for, you know, good Windows monospace fonts, and you can just try typing those things in when you go up here, for instance, to themes under view and then you could try something that is here so let's just do a really quick search on windows and i'm going to show you in just a minute how you would do it on a mac so if i did uh, windows monospace fonts okay so uh, Microsoft Monospace True Type fonts. If you wanted to go here, I'm going to open that in a new tab. There's some other things that you could look at as well. Um, you can also download Monospace stuff from Google Fonts if you want, uh, if you don't like any of the fonts that are available on your particular computer. And it's telling you what are what fonts are available. So it ships with Courier New, which is an option. Um, it also ships with Lucida Sans Typewriter. Um, these are the, the ones that are 
the base default that come with um, Microsoft Windows. So, uh, but you could, as I said before, you can choose other other options. But let's just see, for instance, what Lucida Sans typewriter looks like. So I'm just going to do a copy. So I'll do Control C, and or I could also right click and say copy. And I'm going to go back over here, and at the very beginning, uh, I'm going to put in a, an apostrophe. I'll paste my selection, put an ending apostrophe, and then the comma. And if I click on done, uh, you would see that it would update. And and if it looks very very similar, then um, then it probably is the same. The other thing I could try is go back up here and I could change it to courier new. So let's put that at the beginning of the list. And I'm just going to go ahead and put both of my uh, single apostrophes and uh, apostrophes and my comma. And then I'm going to type in courier space new. And let's hit done. And you see that it updates it again. So you can see what all these different things look like um, as you modify them and so forth. All right. The other thing that you can do if you want to look for other themes with different color uh, coordination um, I don't really like this courier new, by the way, so I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to change this so that I get rid of, whoops, I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to go back to source code pro medium. And this is what I'm going to choose. The other thing I was going to say that you can do is you can also go and look for plugins. This little Lego looking block over here in the icon bar on the right is the extension manager. So if you click on that, what we can do is uh, just let it load, and it's going to show you all of these available things. First of all, since we're talking about themes, you can go here to themes, and then you can look at different options for themes by uh, sort of reading a little bit about them as a you know quick description. Let's look at Raven, for instance, more info. And what it does is it takes it to that uh, extension's GitHub um, address and it gives you a screenshot of what it would look like and if you wanted to test that out you could and then you just simply go back here and for Raven let's just say install and it'll finish installing in just a moment close it and now what we can do is if I hit close again all right I can go back up here to view themes and then now I can choose from the current theme options I can choose Raven and we can see what that looks like you know and you might end up liking this better all right, I'm going <clears> to <throat> stick with the original uh, dark option, all right, so that you do not have to um, download a theme and it would still look like mine. I actually tend to really like the way that the option for brackets dark looks. Okay, so I just jumped over on my Mac side and I just want to show Mac users how they can really quickly look at fixed width fonts. So if you were to do a search up here in the search bar for font book, you would find that uh, Fontbook is something that is natively installed on all Macs. And what's nice is that right off the bat, it has a fixed width option over here. So you can click on fixed width, and then it's the same as monospace. And then it shows you all these different options. And so one of the things that you could do is just look at these names, and uh, you could just try them out by typing in that one section. So I, I'm going to try Menlo. Um, one of the things, too, <clears throat> that I want you to notice real quickly is that if you look at the way this is now, it's a little bit bold on the screen. It's kind of got this really bright boldness. And then if I go up to my view themes, um, you can see that down here where it says source code pro medium, right? That's what looked good on Windows. Um, but if I try light, which looked terrible on Windows, and I click on done, you can see that it's actually kind of easier to read. It might not be in the video, but it is on my screen. So you can play around with this. Um, but the other thing I wanted to go ahead and do is show you, you know, that I could just easily go and uh, I could type, you know, in single apostrophes Menlo with a comma after it, hit done, and then you see that it updates it, right? And that was something that I pulled straight out of Fontbook. All right, so that's something that was uh, really easy to change. I can change it back to what I wanted. OK, but it's nice because you can look at all these different options and these are automatically going to be what's available for fixed width on your Mac. So now let's just jump back over to Windows and finish the rest of the demonstration. I'm also going to show you a couple of other quick things. If you go back to the uh, extensions manager um, and let it load, I want you to do a quick search now for uh, the word icons. Just type in icons. 
And then you're going to see a bunch of different extensions here. Um, if you look down here where it says, uh, let's see, let's scroll a little bit down. And the very last one, it's called Brackets File Icons by Drew Koch, or Coke, however you say his name. Um, and if you were to click on More Info, it takes you to the information. And what it's going to do is it's going to give these little icons for all of these different file types, which is great. Because then immediately you can see if something is HTML5, because it reads the doc type, which we haven't discussed yet, but it reads some information in the file to know what kind of file type it is. You can see if something is a style sheet and so forth, right? So that one's a really good one. I would recommend that you go ahead and install that. So it's brackets file icons, all right? And then before you uh, go ahead and hit close, I want you to also look uh, for something else. Now, you're not going to see anything change, but I'm going to suggest that you go ahead and look for something called auto prefixer. Oops, prefixer. It's all one word. And it'll pop up auto prefixer. Um, and uh, if you could click on more information, but I'll just tell you what it does. What it's going to do is for certain CSS that we will get to later in the course, um, it will allow you to put in just a default uh, style and a, a default property for a style. And then um, whenever you go to save the file, it'll automatically put all the vendor prefixes in there that you need. And uh, if you have, if you're using a special style that, for instance, um, only works in some browsers if you have a special little prefix written. That way you don't have to know what the prefixes are. So I'm just going to recommend, even if you don't understand what I'm talking about right now at all, and that's okay, go ahead and install this auto prefixer and hit close. Now if we hit close again, um, now you see that, in fact, what we've got is we've got our um, icons over here. And you'll see that it, it only applies to the working files. So if I were to, um, you know, for instance, look at this and I were to add it up here to working, you would see that it shows it now both, it's loading it uh, both in the working files and in the um, project files down below. And we go ahead and close that. And I can also get back out and go to no split, go back, get out of split view. So these are some really handy things that I think that might really help you before you actually start your project in terms of configuration and understanding the interface and being able to look at your interface a little bit better.